Hey there, everybody. Welcome to episode 22 of Not Confined, but I probably should be. Uh, Chef Teddy and Paul here. We're getting ready to make some really good food. And um, it's a new recipe, so it's something we have not tried before. So it should be an interesting adventure. But it doesn't seem like it's too hard, so we're going to give it a, a full-on try. Come on, let's go to the kitchen. We want the yummy! Okay, so last night, Teddy snuck into the kitchen in the middle of the night to try and do some prep work. Um, he made these little bundles of our steak. We're making um, a tri-tip sirloin steak uh, medallion. So we're gonna slice it and make it into a nice, a nice meal. Uh, but he wanted to uh, get these salted beforehand to uh, to prep them. So. He took them and put them in these wrapped packages, and I came in the middle and was like, what are you doing? Hey Teddy, what are you? What's going on? What are you? Are you filming? I'm wearing my Pillsbury Doughboy pajamas. What are you doing? Yeah, I know I need to prep the steak for tomorrow, but you you can't do it alone. You know that people can't always hear you. What did you do? You, you salted the meat and put it into the plastic wrap. Okay. Is this already salted too? Okay. So we just need to put that in some plastic wrap. Fine. I would have really liked to have gotten dressed before doing this. Since you started, we might as well finish it. You want to back up? Thank you. All right, 
so think you got enough salt on there? Okay. Your call. A little bit of a roll there. Put another one in and roll them together. Waste not, want not on the saran wrap. kind of large in there. You want to give it another wrap? Yeah, me too. Okay. All right, the saran wrap is really not cooperating with me. I guess it's not saran wrap, is it? It's cling wrap. Competing brand, as it were. I think it's so cool when things develop the name of the brand. You know, like Saran Wrap, Xerox Machine, Kleenex. You know, we as we associate it so firmly with that particular brand that we don't even realize that that's the name brand, not the actual product. The product is cling wrap. The product is bath tissues. The product is coffee machine. But we all know them as their name brand. I guess kind of like you know iPad, but. That's very, 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 very specific nowadays. They've done a pretty good job of making it seem like tablet is the more proper name. Okay, so this goes in the refrigerator till tomorrow, right? Right. Okay. Just drop it in there. And uh, tomorrow I'll try and be dressed a little bit better. Sorry, folks. Anyway, so these were prepared earlier, and they've been in the in the uh, salt salt rub for 24 hours, and in this plastic wrap to keep them kind of the circulated flour uh, circulated flavors. So we also took them out of the refrigerator two hours ago or so, so they would gotten down to they're pretty much at room temperature now. They're a little cool, but you want them as close to room temperature as you can get uh, for the cooking because. Um, yeah, you, you get better results from cooking meat at room temperature than you do from cold. It's just a thing. It's physics. So, our next step is to unwrap them. Which is not really much of a step, but it's a nice, a nice cut, of, of cut of meat, right? Alright, so... The next step is to dry off any excess moisture off of the meat. So I'm just going to put it in some paper towels and just pat it down a little bit. Take off any of that extra moisture, get it get as dry as possible because this is a dry rub that we're going to be using. Well, dry-ish. Looking good. Okay, now I want to take a little bit of oil. Obviously not all of that. And mix it with some garlic. That's uh, about a teaspoon and a half of oil. And take some minced garlic here. This is a couple of cloves worth. And you use a spoon to mix it up, but we're also going to press the garlic, uh, these minced garlic pieces, so that the, the garlic oils go out into the oil itself and uh, really infuse the flavor. Okay, that's, that's good and mixed now, so now we can just take it and drizzle it over top of our steak and kind of rub it in. Rub the oil into each, each like side of the steak so that you get oil and garlic in there. So that's the first part of your rub. Okay, so uh, our next step for the meat is we want to prepare uh, a bit more of our dry rub. So that means taking our ingredients together. Um, 
So you want to get a little container like this if you have one, preferably, or maybe a little Dixie cup if you have it. Something that you can you can shake. You can you can put your hand over and shake if you need to, or put a lid on and shake. That's that's going to be key to getting all your dry ingredients mixed up, right? So we want two teaspoons of oregano. Two. Had a bit of a spill recently with this on the t on the counter, and it it was a boiling boiling pot, and the water deformed it, so it won't stay. It's a weeble wobble now. Very mm, fantastic. Two teaspoons of dried basil. One teaspoon of garlic. I'm sorry, did I say garlic? And that pepper. We did we did garlic already. It's not going to be any more garlic other than this. Teaspoon of pepper. And one and a half teaspoons of where are you? Here you are. Red pepper flakes. So one teaspoon. Now we seal it up and give it a shake. Okay. And there you go. do is we're going to rub it over top of the meat as we were doing with with the other. We're going to split it up pretty evenly amongst all the pieces. Uh, this is uh, 1.5 pounds of beef by the way if you were curious how much it is. So now we're going to make a Bernays sauce. And this is a very easy recipe that I found that's got lots and lots of stars. It seems really, really good. So um, the first thing it calls for is some minced onion. So I'm gonna take this onion and I'm going to mince it. Maybe, there we go. Don't cut your finger off. Kind of the mantra that I say every time I do this. Don't cut your finger off. Because my brain says, do it fast like they do on the TV shows. And my fear says, whoa, no, don't do that. Like when my hand's out of the way, I could totally do that. But when I'm trying to hold stuff together, nope. I suppose that comes with practice, you know? Over time. Oh, a little burning on my eyeballs. Mm. I thought about buying some chopped onions and then mincing them even further in the store, but the chopped onions was like $4 for the same weight as a single onion, which is like 89 cents. So I said, you know what? If that doesn't cost any effort really to chop these things up to mincy mincy mince them so I'll just do that instead save myself the extra three bucks all right that should do one teaspoon of minced onions there we go we also want one teaspoon and a one tablespoon of white wine vinegar. All right. Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> there we go. I've 
I've decided that Floro is my new favorite Italian supplier because they make whole grain rigatoni, which is a super amazing thing. So I try not to eat regular pasta because of its glycemic index. So the whole grain pasta is much, much better for me. And Flora makes all kinds of stuff that you can't get in other brands. You know, normally it's just, you know, spaghetti. They have wet whole grain spaghetti and they have whole grain uh, penne, but that's usually it. But Flora is doing the, the rotinis and rigatonis and all kinds of different stuff. So it's very cool. So I'm very excited about that. All right. So next is, let's, we want two egg yolks. One egg, two egg. Egg roll. Benny Hanna joke. One. Right, I just did that very poorly. Stay in there, little yolk. All right, there's two. And now we're supposed to beat them. Daddy, don't beat us, we'll be good. Ah! All right. That is a beaten egg yolk. Cool. The next contestant is two tablespoons of heavy cream. And two. One and a half teaspoons of lemon juice. One teaspoon of dried tarragon. One teaspoon of chopped fresh parsley. And our last measured ingredient is a quarter teaspoon of salt. So very, very, very good. We're also gonna be using uh, some dried mustard, uh, ground mustard, dried ground mustard, and uh, some cayenne pepper. But their flavors are so strong that you're really just using a, you know, use a pinch each. So very simple, very easy, very quick. So what we wanna do is we have a quarter cup of butter and we're gonna take that and we're gonna pop that in a bowl, medium size, not too big, not too small. Should have enough space for you to easily move around a whisk in inside of it, uh, but not so much space that the ingredients have no room to uh, get to a, a thickness, okay? So I'll pop this in the microwave. Till it's melted. It should be about a minute. Okay, our butter is now melted. And what we want to do is we're going to whisk in our wetter ingredients. So the onions get whisked in. The white wine vinegar. I'm sorry, this is the lemon juice. Lemon juice gets whisked, whisked in. This is the white wine vinegar. This gets whisked in. egg yolks, and your heavy cream. Yay. Okay. And now we're going to toss in our dry ingredients, our parsley, our tarragon,
and a pinch each of the dried mustard and the cayenne pepper. Do not go crazy. This is very, very strong stuff. Pinch. Pinch. All right, now we're gonna put it in the microwave for another minute, a minute and a half, and we're gonna stir it every 20 to 30 seconds just to keep it moving around. We're heating it to get it reduced a little bit because you do want it to thicken. But we gotta be very careful, you don't want it to burn. All right, let's see what we got. How's it taste? Let's uh, take a little bit. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's too much, too much, too much vinegar. Mm, mm, mm. Mm, that vinegar is way overpowering. Okay, okay, fair, fair. Let's uh, play with these ingredients a little bit. I think we can get it to where we need it to be. Okay, that's getting there. Let's pop this back in the microwave and see if we can burn off some of this stuff. Yeah, there we go. Found the flavor. All right, so the next thing that we're gonna do is we're going to um, put our meat in the, in the oven. What, I, what you don't know is that while I was making the Bernays sauce, I was also preheating my broiler and my broiler pan. So, I am now ready to pull that sucker out. Should be super hot. Oh yeah, it's super hot. And we're gonna put the steaks right on, right on the, uh, the broiler. And the sizzling is the right noise. And then we're gonna dump them into the oven and let them cook for five minutes for medium, 10 minutes for well done. I'm gonna go right in the middle because I want medium well. And when you're broiling, you want to keep the meat uh, closer to the oven top. <clears throat> so that's where the, wherever the, the element is, wherever the heating element is, that's where you want to keep it. And that's what you're going to do. And keep an eye on it. We want to turn it every once in a while to make sure we get even, even uh, uh, amounts of the food, or even amounts of cook on each side. And I have my my instant read thermometer, and we want to get to uh, about 150 degrees inside temperature. Oh, another thing that I didn't know, and it's a good thing that I looked it up too, because I wouldn't have known if I hadn't been looking for how to broil. Because broiling, you know, I thought it was very similar to baking, except you use a broiling pan. Turns out, mm, you're not supposed to close your oven, which seems pretty bad for energy consumption and gonna be bad for cooling my house, but it's gonna be good for the food, so 
I'm not, I'm down with it. But I never would have known. And I mean, I was, you know, looking up the instructions in my, um, in the instructions for my instruction put pamphlet for my oven, and it said, you know, leave the door open. I'm like, what? I had looked up. I had looked up online a couple of different places, and it said nothing about leaving the door open. Nothing. Just something that is supposed. Guess you're supposed to know. Maybe if I took in a home ec class at one point, I might have known it. But we didn't have home ec in my school, so no. We had junior achievement, and I took that. I sold little can koozies. We made designs on them and sold them, and yeah. All right, time to flip them. I appear to have misplaced my tongs. Oh dear. These three are done because they're smaller, and these four are going to go back in after I flip them. So I got an internal temperature of 148 right now on this big piece. So that is my indicator. That's really close to where I want it to be, so I'm going to leave it right there. And let it rest for a little while because when the resting will continue to cook. So once all of our side dishes are finished, we'll be ready to eat, and we'll meet you over at the table. Okay, so you may notice that I did make cheese fries again. Um, I didn't cover the, the making of them because we did do it once before, and I feel like that would be redundant. Uh, I did do them a little differently though because instead of using oil in the air fryer, I used butter. So I'm not sure how they're going to taste, but I imagine probably pretty good. Yep, those are amazing. So I also have rice, but I didn't make that. That's uh, well, I made it, but it's microwave. I'm not, um, it's, it's Uncle Ben's before Uncle Ben gets to change his name. Um, it's a garlic and garlic, garlic and butter rice, which is just fine. So let's see what our, our meat tastes like. See these little medallions. You can kind of, kind of see what they look like. They got a nice pink in the center. Mmm. That's a good flavor. And the, uh, the, the Bernays sauce adds a nice, nice little touch to it. Don't think it's necessary because the spicing on the, the beef is quite good, but it does give it a nice smoothness. Still a little bit heavy on the, the vinegar, but it's not overpowering anymore. And it still tastes good. Mm. All right. So that's um, us finished for the night. I hope you enjoyed it. It uh, really wasn't very difficult to cook. Mostly just the, uh, the prep time and the getting the ingredients together was the thing that took the most time. And then just stay in there watching the broiler, which, as, as I told you before, a, a new concept for me. But it worked. It worked very, very well. Okay. So thank you for joining us on episode 22 of I'm Not Confined, but I probably should be. And uh, we will be back again next Monday with another episode of Chef Teddy and Paul. But in the meantime, eat well, love hard. And uh, please remember, like, share, and subscribe. We shall see you the next time.
Take it easy. Good night. Happy Fourth of July, by the way. That was yesterday, in terms of when I'm filming this. Not necessarily when you're watching it. I mean, you could be watching this in November and just be going, Fourth of July? No, Fourth of July was yesterday for me. So, yeah. Bye.